Right, it's talk time now. Nigeria's communications minister has distanced himself or his ministry from the now botched data tariff hike. The minister, Debayo Shitu, who says he isn't defending the act, insists he was not a party to the decision. The minister commended the Senate for taking prompt action on the matter. As minister of communications, I am not supposed to be part of the decision making as to cost of data or even cost of phone calls. So I had the announcement like any other Nigerian had the announcement. And uh, on inquiry, on inquiry, because I'm not trying to defend NCC and I'm not trying to defend the operators. My duty is to provide as objective you know, information as possible I am told, and I'm still going to confirm this from NCC, which, you know, uh, introduced a new fare. I am told that the, the, in the West African sub-region today, the cost of data is the lowest in the West African sub-region. And because phone calls and data are a universal, you know, phenomenon, operators necessarily operators necessarily have to pay for their own services at the dollar rate. So if the cost, the value of Nigerian currency goes down, it means that for them, for operators to be able to pay, you know, uh, those who provide them services outside Nigeria, they have to pay in dollars, not in Naira. So for them to be able to operate, they must have, you know, of reasonable fares for the services being pro provided in Nigeria. All right, uh, that's the background. Now we have joining us the Minister of Communications, Adebayo Shitu, joining us from our Buja studio. Honorable Minister, good morning and Happy New Year to you. Good morning, how are you? Well, we are fine. Uh, it's good to see you this morning. Uh, now, let, let's start it this way. 2016 was a very eventful year when it comes to the performance. And a lot of Nigerians have different uh, reactions to performances of different ministries, even including yours. But your ministry was one of the ministries that seemed to be very robust because of some level of independence. But how would you assess the performance of your ministry in the year 2016? Let's start from there. Well, I thank God that I was given the privilege of presiding over the Ministry of uh, Communications, which easily is one of the most vibrant because the ICT sector, and in particular the telecommunications sector, is a very robust one, which as of date is contributing about 12% to the gross domestic product of Nigeria. Uh, within the year, we've done our best and we have responded to all situations. For instance, the year started with uh, what I call a retreat in Ibadan, where about 400 stakeholders were assembled, you know, to uh, dialogue and interact on the way forward in advancing, you know, and bringing about progress to the ICT industry. And I'm happy that arising from the our retreat, we now have what is called ICT um, Roadmap 2016-2019, which is going to be our Bible and our Quran in guiding and ensuring that the sector continues to make steady progress. We have done our best, the government has done its best, and things I believe and from comments of stakeholders, things have never been as good as they were in 2016. All right. Of course, there are many other opportunities for us to make better progress. And we are determined. The political will is there. We also have the energy and in <coughs> all humility, we also, I would say, have the intellectual wherewithal to confront all challenges that come our way. Our main goal, like I said, is to ensure that government is able to do the needful 
in assisting and supporting all stakeholders and also in ensuring that all right. Nigerians get value for their money. Okay, uh, Honorable Minister, let us blow your trumpet for you. Let's read out some of the achievements uh, during uh, this year in review. Uh, subscription jumped from 148.7 million in 2015 to 152.28 million in 2016. Teledensity rose from 107.67% to 109.14% in 2016. And FDI jumped really from $32 billion in 2015 to $38 billion in 2016. What is responsible for that? Well, I thank God that uh, you have been gracious enough to tell this country what the government has been able to achieve in their city sector. Like I said, the, um, uh, we can only hope that things will continue to improve. We have the energy, we have the political will, and the things are moving on fine. As a matter of fact, I must tell you also, in addition to what you've just said, the ICT sector today is the fastest growing of all sectors of the Nigerian economy. And I want to believe that this is so because we have been able to establish you know, um, a convenient business environment for industries to thrive. I can also assure you that in year 2017, which were much more investment, foreign and otherwise, will be coming to further develop this industry. All right, Honorable Minister, one of the stories that generated uh, little controversy in recent time in your ministry is the tariff hike in, in calls and data that, uh, well, you, you came out to say that, uh, well, you heard it on, 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 the, on the media, just like any other person, but in the minds of Nigerians, if the NCC is coming up with a policy like that, they expect the minister to be aware or to give endorsement or even approval before he flies. Well, in governance, there are regulations and there are laws and there are limitations. The job of the, in, of the ministry, the mandate of the ministry, is to provide policy direction for the industry. And when I talk of policy direction, it's not only about telecoms, it's about the whole gamut of ICT development. Consequently, we have about five agencies under the ministry. NCC is one, NITDA is one, Galaxy Backboard is one, Postal Services is one, and again, NICOMSAT. All these have their you know, various mandates, and again, the law which establishes each of these guides us to the relationship between NCC and between the other agencies on the one hand and, you know, the ministry. There is no simple or one, you know, guideline. The, each of it has different relationships. Now, Honorable Minister, you were, I asked a question earlier about uh, the NCC planned hike in uh, tariff, or you were explaining some things to us. Well, uh, like I was saying, uh, the, each of the, when NCC was established, the Ministry of Communications was not yet in existence. Consequently, the NCC law, those who crafted the law at that time, made NCC almost independent of any ministry. So when, you, so by those regulations, NCC had a right on regulatory issues to take independent decisions without reference to the minister. So like I said, the ministry is only involved in general policy formulation, which is devoid of interference in regulatory matters. So it is no uh, you know, big deal that they didn't, NC didn't need to consult with me. What they did from my information and investigation is that they have been holding meetings with operators with a view to arriving at a decision. And I also want to say this. It is, I mean, I would wish, if it were possible, for all these services to be completely free to all Nigeria. But we know that that would be a mere utopia. That wish would be a mere utopia. Because the telecom companies came into Nigeria to invest for the purpose of making profit. 
it is not feasible that they would want to operate and incur losses. And the enabling environment that both the ministry and NCC should play is to ensure that there's a balance between the interests of the masses or of the subscribers and that of the companies who have invested heavily in the industry and who look forward to making profit. One of the, um, uh, one of the reasons, I am told, why NCC had to agree to you know, a hike in the fee for data is the fact that if it was not done, so many companies are likely to collapse who are providing data services. And if they collapse, of course, one or two giants will be there and perhaps a monopoly would arise. So the, 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 it was the duty of NCC to ensure that it stabilizes the industry such, as, such that no, in, no, none of these companies you know, collapse as a result of you know, uh, unprofitable data fee. All right, Honorable Besides Minister. Besides that, I'm also aware by virtue of my position. That, yes. Yeah. Oh, the, can I continue? Well, let's 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 recouch it this way. Then you can continue and put your answers together. Uh, lots of thoughts and reaction to that particular statement you made. Even right now, the yours is just to provide the policy statement, policy direction, and the NCC is almost autonomous. But that wasn't said during Amobola Johnson, who was the former minister before you came on board, who worked as seriously yes, with NCC. Well, Please Johnson. hold on, hold on, Minister. Who worked let with me, the NCC me, to reduce... Me. Hold on, Minister, oh, yeah. please. Who worked with the NCC to reduce tariff for us in Nigeria where people can now easily just walk into any shop, buy a recharge card for 200 naira and get uh, data uh, services at a very cheaper price? People have said it's because you are not an expert. You are just a political appointee. Perhaps you are just a round peg, a round peg in a square expert. hole. Omopola Johnson was not also an expert. Omola Johnson is a channel accountant, is a consultant, a management consultant. It's not about whether one is an expert or not. What I said with regard to being an expert or not is the law set up specifically NCC and got experts into the field who would be able to assess the technical details of whatever is going on. So it's not about whether, I mean, comparing me with Omola Johnson, there's no basis. My mother, my mother operated, you know, one, two years ago. I'm operating in 20, 2006, 2007. And as a lawyer, I want to respect laws to take independent decisions without reference to the minister. So like I said, the ministry is only involved in general policy formulation, which is devoid of interference in regulatory matters. So it is... No, uh, you know, big deal that they didn't, NC didn't need to consult with me. What they did from my information and investigation is that they have been holding meetings with operators with a view to arriving at a decision. And I also want to say this. It is, I mean, I would wish if it were possible for all these services to be completely free to all Nigerians. But we know that that would be a mere utopia. That wish would be a mere utopia. Because the telecom companies came into Nigeria to invest for the purpose of making profit. It is not feasible that they would want to operate and incur losses. And the enabling environment that both the ministry and NCC should play is to ensure that there's a balance between the interests of the masses or of the subscribers and that of the companies who have invested heavily in the industry and who look forward to making profit. One of the, um, uh, one of the reasons, I am told, why NCC had to agree to you know, a hike in the fee for data is the fact that if it was not done, so many companies are likely to collapse who are providing data services. And if they collapse, of course, one or two giants will be there and perhaps a monopoly would arise. So the, 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 it was the duty of NCC to ensure that it stabilizes the industry 
such as such that no in no none of these companies you know collapse as a result of you know uh, unprofitable data fee. All right, honourable minister. Besides that, I'm also aware by virtue of my position. That, yes. Yeah. Oh, the, can I continue? Well, let's 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 recouch it this way. Then you can continue and put your answers together. Uh, lots of thoughts and reactions to that particular statement you made. Even right now, the yours is just to provide the policy statement, policy direction, and the NCC is almost autonomous. But that wasn't said during Amobola Johnson, who was the former minister before you came on board, who worked as seriously but, with but NCC. Wait, wait, Please hold on, hold on, minister. Who worked let with me, the NCC me, to reduce? Hold on, oh, Minister, yeah. please. Who worked with the NCC to reduce tariff for us in Nigeria, where people can now easily just walk into any shop, buy a recharge card for 200 naira, and get uh, data uh, services at a very cheaper price? People have said it's because you are not an expert. You are just a political appointee. Perhaps you are just a round peg, a round peg in a square expert. hole. Omopola Johnson was not also an expert. Omar Johnson is a channel accountant, is a consultant, a management consultant. It's not about whether one is an expert or not. What I said with regard to being an expert or not is the law set up specifically NCC and got experts into the field who would be able to assess the technical details of whatever is going on. So it's not about whether, I mean, comparing me with Omar Johnson, there's no basis. My mother, my mother operated, you know, one, two years ago. I'm operating in 2006, 2007. And as a lawyer, I want to respect laws. If a law distinguishes or delineates my responsibility, I will not go out of my place to go and double into affairs which technically and legally do not fall within my mandate. So what I'm saying is, the NCC, they are Nigerians too, all of us are Nigerians, and I've said it times and times again, it will be the wish of the government to have all this free if we have companies who would afford to make them free. We must also remember that the companies offering these services are not government agencies. We have had situations in this country where government doubled into business and got its nose, you know, uh, you know bruised because really government has no business in business so if the companies operating or offering these services are private companies we must ensure that an enabling environment is provided i am also informed that the new increment was actually had actually been earlier introduced in 2003 and had to be suspended at that time and then when complaints were coming from operators of course the NCC was left with no choice to accede. And what they actually acceded to, you know, what the, the, the industry operators were demanding was much higher. But through negotiation, they arrived at an increment from five from 55 Kobo to 90 Kobo, and that is the increment that we have. So I would wish that these things are provided free. But the reality, if we will not be deceiving ourselves, is that because operators are private sector driven operators because they have made investments if they feel that they cannot profitably operate the choice for nigerians will be to have them pack up and if they pack up we are worse off so my wish and my desire like i said i want to repeat is if we could have this thing free you know we should have it but you would agree with me that it is often said that there's no free lunch, even in free time. So we, we either choose Sir. whether we want these operators to continue to operate and provide service mm. or for the industry operators to pack up and then we have nothing. Oh, God okay. forbid that situation. It's so all right. I want to appeal to Nigerians that... Yeah, it, honorable it, it, Minister, we, let we me come this. to you on this. You see, the, the currency, the Nigerian currency is going down. Beg your pardon. Yeah, let me come to you on this. Now, you've talked about the independence or the seeming independence yeah. of the NCC under your ministry. But if they come up with the price hike in the first place, will it be in the place of the ministry or in your office to intervene? Can you intervene if they come up with that? You see, I, I, I'm sorry this question is coming up again. 
we must face reality. You are in business even as a broadcasting house. You have your rates. I am sure your advert rate last year is not what it is this year. You increase. If you increase in broadcasting, and, you know, with due respect, all that you operate on is, you know, uh, you know air. The sort of, when people talk, it's just air. So if you increase, would there be any moral justification for you to feel that other people who are also in the marketplace should run at a loss if broadcasting houses are not running at a loss? Realistic. Any of us could also go into that industry. Today, the reality is for the private sector, they would want a situation where they'll be able to make profit. And this is a, the situation that they also have to pay subscriptions at the international rate. Because most of the companies where they subscribe for services are not Nigerian companies. They are, they are at the international level. If the Nigerian uh, Naira is, being, is devaluing, Certainly to acquire, I mean, if for instance they have to pay $10 for something, $10 last year, what the, the amount of naira you need to buy $10 last year is certainly not the amount, the same amount you need to buy $10 there. So we just must be realistic and then appreciate that government's goal is to try to stabilize and moderate. We cannot, as a government, insist that they must run at a profit. And this is the reality. I wish we could have it for free. Of course, if tomorrow the operators, all of them, come up and say that they'll be offering these, uh, you know, services free, the Nigerian government will commend them and appreciate what they are doing. But we know that that will be a utopia because we don't pay for the services that you know they provide we don't pay their staff we don't pay for all their subscriptions okay it's right. a pity that this is happening but I, I want to believe that in every other sector of this economy crisis and costs are going up i think with due respect to all of us that we cannot isolate the you know telecom sector and say that they must remain where they were two, three, four years ago, it would be simply unrealistic. Of course, even, even, I mean, their staff will continue to ask for salary increases for promotion and all of that. So this is a reality as communication minister. Perhaps if I was not the if I was not the communications minister, I'll be thinking along, you know, the way you are thinking. But I have a position, I have a duty, not only to Nigerians, but also to the operators who we in invited to come into Nigeria. Remember that time was when we had United. When we had United in Nigeria, which was a government agency, we had only 500,000 lines for a population then of about 150 million. You know the stress you had to go to get a line. You had to pay in hundreds of thousands to get a line. If you, were, if you had to, you know, phone overseas, you could not even do that from the comfort of your home. You had to go to a nice tell facility, pay, you know, and be on the queue until it is your time. All right. But because the Nigerian government invited operators, they came, they invested, and today we have more than 150 million active lines. Okay. And you know very well that in the comfort from the comfort of your home, you could it will call the entire world. Now, we've been talking about this, and the ministry was established in 2011 to foster a knowledge-based economy and information society. It has five agencies to drive its mandate. They are the Nigeria Communications Commission, NCC, which we've been talking about all the while, the National Information Technology Development uh, Authority, uh, the NITDA, and then the Nigerian Postal Service, and then the Nigecom Sat Limited that operates Nigeria Communication Satellite Systems, a Galaxy Backbone, an ICT service provider owned by the federal government of Nigeria. These are some of them. In 2016, the ICT sector's contribution to GDP and the telecommunication sector's investment climbed to $68 billion, with $35 billion coming 
from indigenous operators. According to the National Bureau of Statistics, the telecommunication sector alone contributed 1.41 billion uh, naira in the first quarter of 2016. In the second quarter, this uh, sector contributed 1.580 uh, billion naira to the country's GDP. And in the third quarter of 2016, the telecom sector contributed a total of 1.398 trillion naira. Right. Now, should Nigerians expect any hike in tariff plans anytime soon? It's not within my province to decide whether it will happen or not. Because I am not an operator, I am not involved, I don't know what you know, they have to expect in remaining in service, in the service of Nigerians. It, I think it's a matter of the market forces deciding. A lot of factors go in. You see, we, we have, it's unfortunate that the Nigerian state over the years has itself failed to make certain provision for operators. It is only in Nigeria, for instance, that I see that operators would have to rely on their own self-effort in providing electricity in all other places where you know telecom operations occur they rely on government electricity but in nigeria you know that they have to also rely more than go on government electricity they have to rely on their own generators they have to you know purchase uh, diesels to power their mass all over the country this is one of the uh, additional costs and additional burden that i believe the operators are going through. The second issue is about security. There is no security in this, and we all know this. Many of their masks and other installations are usually at the mercy of marauders and people who attack these facilities, who destroy these facilities, who cut away many of their equipment, and who even at times go on to kill their megas all over. These are additional expenditures you know which these companies you know go through as a nigerian and as, as an official i must be you know fair to all sides so i want to believe that the, you know it is a two-way thing what nigerian government can do and must do is to for instance be able to guarantee electricity be able to guarantee uh, security be able to also guarantee low cost of right of way you know through which they you know lay their cables these are all issues that add to the cost of operating you know telecom companies in nigeria i am not using this to justify but i am just reminding us as nigerians that we as a country have over the last 16 years that these you know companies have been in in operation we have failed nigeria has failed you know in providing you know, an enabling environment good enough for us to continue to be able to insist that prices must, you know, uh, be in check. Well, I, I, to your question, it is not within me. I will not be part of the decision making as regards how much is the cost of services, whether of voice or data. It is between operators and NCC, and I'm confident that MCC has all it takes to look at all the indices that are required. If they bring proposals, that is telecom operators, I mean, it's not as if, having regard to the quality of people in NCC, it's not as if they just take everything like who can sink her. Of course, they will have their own, you know, technical factors which they will measure, you know, the you know, market forces before agreeing to whatever is uh, being proposed. So I think Nigerians, we have NCC in place, I am confident of the effectiveness of their decision making and particularly when the Senate, when the announcement was first made about increase, the Senate did a resolution, you know, suspending the increment and the Senate also invited all stakeholders, you know, to the table to negotiate and understand, you know, the factors which they And I can say this authoritatively. By the time the discussions had concluded, the Senate itself agreed that it was inevitable that, you know, data costs cannot remain what it has been in the last three, four years. But the only, you know, uh, lacuna 
that the scene I highlighted is the fact that NCC had not adequately discussed with members of the public. They had not adequately informed, you know, or interacted with the public for the public to see, you know, the, the cause or causes of this inevitability in increment in data. And I, I want to believe that by the time the NCC comes out to bring out all the factors or all, all the facts, you know, to the public uh, domain, yes. I think Nigerians will be, you know, uh, convinced mm. that Honorable Minister. what has been done and what ought to have been done three years ago is an inevitability. Honorable Which Minister, the way, you, the way you, you're, you're sounding, welcome. yeah, the minis yeah. Minister, you seem to be absorbing yourself. NCC is under your ministry. Perhaps NCC should be taken out of under your ministry, then we know that NCC is autonomous. But if NCC is, as it were, still, it's still under your ministry, then you should stand a bit more concerned, even for ordinary Nigerians. Which brings me to one of the pillars of, 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 your, of your tenure as the minister when you came in. You, you made mention of a quality service delivery. As per, as per what Nigerians pay for, for, for uh, internet usage, for, for, for telephone phone calls, the tariffs are still high and we don't really get that much uh, quality service delivery. Well, I want to thank uh, the last uh, commentator. I am sure she did not follow us from the beginning. I have said that as a lawyer, even if I'm not a lawyer, as a minister, I'm supposed to know my limitation. NCC was set up by a law. The ministry itself operates by a mandate of the president. I, it is not within my purview. And the fact that the law says that NCC on technical issues, which include, you know, price fixing and all of that, that NCC is, you know, is in, in, almost autonomous, almost independent. I mean, where are they take it away from me? I mean, the law is there. The law must be followed. What the law says as of today is that I am to supervise, you know, the NCC. And that supervision, I am intelligent enough that my supervision is only limited to policy issues, not to technical issues of, you know, you know pricing and all of that. It, it, that shouldn't be, you know, my problem. I mean, it's as if you are asking say for the president because he's the president and because the ministry of uh, whatever ministry is under him he must be involved in that day-to-day -day operation it doesn't happen that way mm -hmm. we are operating by the law and what the law says is that i am to supervise but also i am intelligent enough to know that my supervision is limited only to general policy issues with regard to the issue of poor services i will say with all humility that I'm also a victim of these poor services. And I can assure you that we are taking every step. These problems have arisen. I have also told you of the fact that even Nigeria State has a problem, has questions to ask. Why have we not been able to fix our electricity over the years? Why has security continued to be a problem and a challenge? Why is the cost of right of way still a big problem? Why do we have multiplicity of taxes, as they allege? These are issues we are taking one after the other. And I can assure you that as concerned Nigeria, we will not relent and we will not, you know, rest on our, on our oars hmm. until we have a near-perfect situation. Now, according to the Nigerian Communications Commission, Nigeria has about 150 million active telephone users and Nigeria has crossed 20% broadband penetration and the country is already on its way to achieving 30% penetration by 2018. In spite of the appreciable growth and contributions of the telecoms industry, the sector is still faced with challenges ranging from willful destruction of telecoms facilities to multiple taxation, regulatory fines, uh, regulatory fines rather, among others. Now, Nigerians still have to grapple with the menace of unsolicited text messages and calls from telecoms operators, the proposed communication tax, poor services, and planned data tariff hike. Now, in 2016, Nigeria lost about 75 or 78 billion to the activities of cyber criminals who target financial institutions and government ministries, departments, and agencies. The country has lost about 159 billion naira in the last 13 years 
to cybercrime alone. Mm -hmm. uh, Honorable Minister, now let's go to the issue of cybercrime. Quite a lot of money has been lost, but perhaps we'll hold off on that and bring in Foladele here mm -hmm. to let us know what Nigerians are saying about this issue. All right, uh, Fola, good morning. Good morning, Salam. Good morning, Mike. Good morning, Honorable Minister. So, of course, there's a strong focus on the telecoms industry of online. So, let's see what you some Nigerians... You can be sure Nigerians You can be to. sure. We don't play with our data. <laughs> <laughs> so, let's see what Nigerians are saying online, or some Nigerians at least. Tafa Hemen says, wish the competition in the telecoms industry in Nigeria will spread to other sectors. Everybody going for GLTE. What competition can do? Next one, from Martins, he says, amongst all sectors in Nigeria, I like what I'm observing in the telecommunication sector. The competition is fierce. Calif says, telecommunication providers in Nigeria are taking advantage of us. They are all the same, ripping us off on a daily basis. Extris Rules says, at this stage, Nigeria's telecommunication industry should provide users with unlimited mobile data. Oman Gozika says, 500 MB gone in a day. What's happening to Nigeria's telecommunication industry? And someone had an epic reply to that. Opnepa said, did they use the internet on your behalf? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I, um, I want to go to the Honorable Minister on this one. People here, um, well, someone here feels like she didn't get um, the worth of her money. She feels like, you know, she paid for data, but the, the quality and the amount she got and the, the speed, it went by so fast that she didn't feel like she got worth of her money. What is being done about this? I've seen a lot of people complain or heard a lot of people complain about this, about how we're paying so much for data, but the speed and the quality we're getting is not, you know, it's not, um, not commensurate. It's not commensurate, exactly. So what is being done about this? What practical steps are being taken? I want to thank uh, the lady who does uh, made the comments. Uh, number one, the industry is the competitive one. As of today, we have five main telecoms operators. Of course, we also have a lot of other companies you know, providing data services. I think this competition should engender improvement, you know, competition also in the area of providing quality service. I want to believe that what Nigerians should do when they have complaints is not only to complain to the companies which, yeah, with which they subscribed, but also to go ahead to complain to NCC. And I'm aware that NCC has a toll-free line where complaints can be lodged and where actions would be done. On my part, I've had calls within the year 2016 to invite all the telecom companies and virtually read the riot act, you know, to them. Because like any other Nigerian, I have also been a victim. I want to believe also that NCC is doing the utmost in, uh, in you know, uh, meeting the telecommunication companies to line. Uh, when complaints, you know, are not able to uh, be uh, taken up properly by NCC, of course, when it gets to my table, when I have complaints, I will do the needful. For now, I haven't had any serious complaints, you know, coming because I believe NCC is already doing its best. Mm. We, like in other sectors of the economy, we are yet to reach a stage of perfection. Mm. If perfection ever exists, we pray that we are able to reach it. Nigeria is one country which is a peculiar, you would all agree with me. And uh, I want to believe that all hands must be on there. The duty of subscribers is to make sure that when they feel fleas of their money, they should make complaints first to the telecom operator because, I mean, it's a contractual uh, relationship between the subscriber and the telecom operator. If they don't uh, do what is, you know, useful, of course the choice is also open to the subscriber to perhaps uh, look for you know other competitors to their own and then secondly to complain to ncc and thereafter to complain to my office i want to assure you that government has the will the political will and has all it takes to uh, ensure that improvements arise okay. like i said in virtually every sector of our economy we have problems we have challenges and right. i can assure you that this government in all you know uh, sectors 
we are doing the utmost, perhaps more than any other government in the past has, you know, done. Okay. Honorable Minister, thank you very much. Paula, thank, thank you, you also for coming. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Honorable Minister, we, we are coming to the end of the program somehow, but let, we, we know how we, we've read earlier how much the uh, ministry, under the ministry, uh, so much money was uh, brought into the government coffers running over billions uh, of Naira. In the year 2017, what are the projections uh, your ministry has for the people in telecoms and what they stand to benefit in uh, or how they stand to enjoy services in 2017? Well, I want to assure you that I'm conscious of the fact that I have a job to do. I mean, if the president did not have competence, I mean, confidence in my capability to uh, supervise or superintend over the Ministry of Communications, he would not have appointed me. And I want to assure you that um, the generality, the cross-section of industry operators have shown all sorts of confidence and have shown, you know, all sorts of support and collaboration with me. I want to assure you that in year 2017, the, uh, the roadmap of the industry, once it gets the north of the Federal Executive Council, we had delays actually. We also have had approval before now, but because of certain intragovernmental you know, uh, delays, uh, it's not yet been approved by the Federal Executive Council. I want to believe that within the next uh, couple of weeks, we will have approval, and once we have approval, we will launch the uh, roadmap, you know, for the entire country to uh, support and collaborate and take the best advantage of. The fact that we even have a roadmap is an initiative that has never been in place. The ministry has been on for a couple of years, and we have had, I'm not indicting previous government, but the fact that we initiated a roadmap shows how serious we are. All and right. the fact also that this industry is a knowledge-based industry. We are trying to show that we are not just there, you know, just to, you know, pass time. We okay. are there to get the best of ideas from in the international community, from Minister, every country which has made the best. Okay, we are and winding down now. Just uh, let's quickly chip in on the issue of uh, cyber crime. We talked about it earlier, that about uh, 159 billion naira has been lost to well, so cyber, cyber crime. What are you crime. doing in 2017 to curb that? Very good. As the name implies, cyber crime means criminality in the cyberspace. And whether criminality is in the cyberspace or is, you know, in the open society, it is still criminality. Within this government, the, the agency which has mandate to fight cyber criminality is not the Ministry of Communications, but the Office of the National Security Advisor. The uh, secu National Security Advisor is the chairman of the committee, and I believe that, you know, operations have been put in place, you know, to checkmate, you know, the onslaught by cyber criminals. Mm. I want to assure you that as one of the stakeholders, in the committee, we are doing the needful, but I do not have the mandate to speak on behalf of the National Security Advisor with regard to the fight against cyber criminality. All right, Honorable Minister, let me, uh, before I let you go, let me ask you a question about the uh, NIGECOM SATs. When this, uh, this, the Nigerian satellite was launched, all Nigerians, whether they understood what it was or not, became really proud of what it stood for. But what is the state of Nigerian satellite right now? Well, I thank you for this question. Nigeria currently has one satellite in orbit. It is doing its best to run profitably, but there are a few challenges. The first challenge is that all the investment that ought to have been made in provision, in, in providing grant facilities have not yet been made. We still need, you know, to put in a lot of money to make sure that every facility that is required for profitable, you know, satellite business is put in place. Number two, the fact that Nigeria as a country has just one satellite in, in orbit can be likened to a transport company which flies Lagos and Abuja, 
but which does not have a spare tire. Of course, passengers would not have confidence in the sense that if there's a, you know, a, a, a tire bus on the way, passengers will be stopped. And that means Nigeria must go ahead to acquire backups to the one satellite so that, you know, uh, Nigeria, potential Nigerian customers would have confidence that if one of the satellites, you know, has problems, they, are, they will always be back up. I have been making efforts, strenuous efforts since I came on board to uh, ensure that NICOMSAT is able to acquire two more satellites. We have been to China on two occasions. We have negotiated with China Exim Bank and with the manufacturers. In principle, China Exim Bank has agreed to provide funding to the tune of $550 million for the two satellites that we require. This would, however, Nigeria would, however, have to provide 15% of this $550 million. That money, we can't get it now. And so I can use, I'm using this opportunity uh, to invite Nigerian investors. Yes, Honorable Minister, we, we, take we, stakes in this 15%. Mm. Honorable Minister, sorry, I, I need to ask you this last question right. before before we go. Yeah. Now, the your 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 ministry got the one of the least allocation in the 2017 budget, about 18 billion naira, about 11 billion for recurrent, and 7 billion naira for capital. How do you intend to cope with this in 2017? I don't think you got your figure right. Okay, give give us give us the figure. Our our uh, the figure is uh, the figure is 7 billion. Not 18 billion. Okay, 7 billion in as a whole. Budget. Last year it was 6 billion. Yes. Re okay, recurrent and capital. So what's, in for, what's the difference between re recurrent expenditure and the capital expenditure allocations for 2017? Well, <laughs> capital expenditure is all that are required for capital you know, uh, investments. No, I'm, re I'm referring to, to the figures. The radio stations. I'm referring to the figures, Honorable Minister. Sorry. I'm referring I, no, to the I, figures. I don't, I don't have that figure now, but okay. uh, the entire budget for the ministry, the entire budget for the ministry, okay. capital and recurrent is about $7 billion. Okay. And you want to ask, why is it so small? So, you know, poultry, when we have uh, ministries which are $529 billion, mm -hmm. some have 50, some have all of that. Yeah. Our ministry is an is a service industry, if you like. Okay. It is can also be described as an enabling in industry. Right. ICT is just like electricity. It's something you do not see, but you feel it when it is there. Electricity is required by every sector and every you know a, you know livelihood. In the same vein, ICT is an enabler. What we do is to provide, you know, uh, policies for the private sector-led industry to operate and to be enabled properly. All right, Honorable we Minister. The building of roads. Honorable Minister. We even. Honorable Minister, thank you. I must yes. thank you really very much for spending your morning <laughs> with us. We have. So much to talk about, but there's no time at all to finish talking about all this. But we must thank you for It is a pity coming. the time given is short because <laughs> I was going to explain this issue of decomposition, which is very important. Uh all right, but, uh, we, it looks we will. Like, uh, your time, uh, but certainly we can. For this interview. Yes, we, we can. We can arrange for another time for us to talk about this because Nigecom site is there, uh, NPS, the Nipo service is there for us to also talk about. So there are other other times we'll uh, we'll talk about this. Thank you. Have a, a, there's a lot to show in na in in the Naples also exactly right. we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that we'll have a second uh, leg of yeah. the interview we'll, we'll have a second leg on this thank you very thank much you. for coming on this morning thank you